In this video, we're going to go over the principles of deadlifting, all right? So the deadlifting is a staple movement that I use in many of my programs for no matter what athlete, sport, client uh, that I'm working with. But again, there's many variations of the deadlift. There's a trap bar deadlift, there's a barbell deadlift, there's a kettlebell deadlift, there's single leg deadlifts, there's staggered deadlifts. So there's a lot of different variations to deadlifting, but again, key principles apply to all of them no matter what you're doing, all right? So... To do a deadlift, and I'm going to teach a kettlebell deadlift here because I think it's one of the easiest ones to do because we can keep the weight right under us. Anytime we can keep the weight closest to us, it's easier for us to do, easier on our back. When things get farther out from us, that starts making our back work harder uh, to, pro to produce the same motion. All right, And so that's why I love trap bars are easier, um, kettlebells are easier. We have a bar, people have a tendency to get out there, and there's maybe a little more technique and skill that is required with that, but again, if you know this, you can apply that to no matter what you're doing, all right? So when it comes to deadlifting, your hamstring mobility, so your ability to move at your hips and your hamstrings length or mobility is going to dictate uh, how easy it is for you to pick up something from the floor, all right? So if that's going to be variable to everyone. Uh, to test that, you could lay on your back and do a single leg raise, and you can kind of see how good your hamstring mobility is. Someone with really good hamstring mobility is gonna be able to bring it probably all the way back a little bit farther. Those who struggle are gonna be down here, all right? And so if you are someone that struggles and can't get it that high, we may have to do more of an elevated uh, deadlift for you where we raise the weight uh, to fit the, your mobility, okay? But here we're gonna go over the principles here. So when we set up to a kettlebell deadlift, you're going to put it right in line with your uh, ankle bones there, all right? And we're gonna do what's called a hip hinge. So we need to master our ability to hinge. Hinging is where we move at our hips, not our back. So slight bend in the knees, push the butt back until you get tension in your hamstrings, all right? This is putting all the tension in our posterior chain here, hamstrings, glutes. And those are the muscles that we primarily are gonna be using when we deadlift, and those are our powerhouse uh, muscles. Those are the things, our strongest muscles that when we are picking up heavy things, we want those doing the work. We don't want so much our back doing the work. Is our back doing the work? Yes, but we wanna put more emphasis into those muscles, okay? So, butt back, and then once you hit your end range here, I still can't get there, right? So I have two options. I could then bend at my back to go get it, which in general, we don't want to do, okay? It's okay to bend our back, but when we're lifting heavy things, ideally, we don't want to change our back's position during the lift. So you can be flexed, and then if you stand up and stay flexed, you can do that. You'll see a lot of big elite power lifters do that, but in most cases, I'm not teaching that. So we go here, and instead of bending our back, now we're gonna bend our knees more to get the rest of the way. But what a lot of people want to do though, they bend their knees, is they really let their knees go forward or they bend their knees first to get there and it becomes more of a squat versus hinging first, locking out the hinge, then using the knees rest of the way. Because we again, want the tension here. So hip width apart when we do this. Uh, if you have really long legs, you may do a sumo and get wide. All right, it's another variation, but we're just going with traditional right now. So about hip width apart butt back till you're locked out and based off your hamstring mobility, bend the knees the rest of the way, but I still have tension here, all right? And then once you grab the bell, grab the bar, if you had a bar, we're going to lock in our lats. So think if you had an orange back here, you had to crush it or a dollar bill, and you have to hold on to it. So you're gonna see your arms rotate back. That's engaging our lats. It's gonna give us more of a brace back there as well. And just like squatting, we have to brace here, push your stomach out, okay, flexing the muscle and breathing through the nose, creating that intra-abdominal pressure. So breath in, down, I'm gonna pack that lats, okay? And then I'm gonna kind of lean back just a little bit and I'm creating so much tension that the weight's coming off the ground just a little bit before I go up. So a little tension, my lats are locked in and then it's push with your legs up and you're standing tall. It's not a lean back. Many people, when they come up, will extend their back. We don't want that. It's a get your hips to full extension 
we are not moving our back into extension, all right? So now at the top, we reverse the process. Butt goes back, shoulders are still staying tight, keeping that bracing going on in my stomach until I feel tension in my hamstrings, and then I'm bending the knee down, all right? And that's gonna be a rep. Um, common things that people do is, again, they'll either bend their knees too much to get there, and now I'm getting more of this versus this, okay? Get your hips back like I'm trying to pop a car door shut. I'm looking at hold on the groceries, okay? Get back there, shut the car door, don't bend the knees, okay? That's a big thing. Or when they get down here, they don't get tight, and two, they don't get slack out of the system. So they don't get that tension, so when they, they kind of slack, and then they pull, and they take the slack out, and you can see it catch in their back versus get that tension out, then push. And we don't put, push with our legs, people pull with their back. So at the bottom, when I'm down here, I get that tension out, I am pushing the ground with my legs to initiate this lift. I'm not pulling with my back, all right? Those are the big things that I see many people do um, that are incorrect. Now, say you have really tight hamstrings and it's really hard for you to get down to the ground and pick it up. It's okay to elevate it, all right? So all you do is you take a step like this, um, bring it up, take some wood, stack it like that. If you're doing a trap bar, you put the bumpers higher up, and then you come on top of it, and now this helps those who lack the mobility. So it's easier for me to get there, and I need less knee bend now. I can reach it with just mostly my hinge, but everything else is the same, right? Breath in, brace, pack the lats, and I'm gonna push up with my legs, pull it through, butt goes back, tap it, push with my legs, down, tap it. We control the descent always, nice to explode up when we do that, all right? So those are some of the bigger key points and principles of deadlifts that you should be applying, no matter which one you're doing, so that you can maximize your deadlift and uh, minimize the likelihood of injuring yourself when performing a deadlift.